welcome to worship today. I'm Pastor Justin here at United Lutheran Church. We are grateful that you are joining us. Uh, before we begin, I just want to tell you some pretty exciting news. This past week was our fall kickoff. That meant it was our first Sunday with four worship services, 7.30, 8.30, 9.30, and 10.45. Frankly, it went exceedingly well. Of course, it was a little messy in a couple places, a little bit of overlap, but frankly, it went better than anticipated. Thank you for the attendance. Thank you for the energy. Thank you for your flexibility. Uh, if you're a visitor and you're checking out uh, us out online, uh, we're thankful that you're doing so. You're also welcome to join us any Sunday in person. Also, we started Sunday school, which begins at 945. We had our biggest first day of Sunday school in years. So again, thank you for everything. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for the work you're doing, not just in United Lutheran, but in so many congregations in this community. We thank you for your work in our lives. We ask you, Lord, to continue to broaden our imagination, help us to see what you're doing in the world around us, and give us the courage to participate. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary. Good news for today comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, the 13th chapter. I'm reading to you from a brand new Bible. It's a Collaborate Bible. It's a Bible that we give to all of our 7th and 8th graders who are going through confirmation. We were able to do this thanks to the generosity of many people from the congregation who gave money in the names of saints who have gone before us. So I want to say thank you for your generosity. It's so fun to be able to give these young people Bibles each and every year. Again, the good news from the book of Matthew. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds. But when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 20 years ago when I was a new pastor, I felt absolutely filled with the Holy Spirit. I was excited to go out into the world and, and change everything. You know, I was just on, I was just passionate about, I was convicted for about six days a week. That seventh day, however, uh, usually a Monday, the day after Sunday, still my day off to this day. That seventh day, I became a troll person. And I didn't want to go out and spread the gospel. I didn't want to go out and change the world. I just wanted to go into my basement and just play video games and be left alone. That's pretty much all I wanted to do now as a father of young kids. And so mostly what I had to do in my day off is, is tend to the kids. But on those rare days when Larissa would take the kids away and I just had a day to myself, I was absolutely a basement Person, person. I just sat in the basement and I did nothing. I played video games and I wanted no one to talk to me or, or even be aware of my existence. I wanted the world to just, just leave me alone. That's all I wanted in all of everything is just to be left alone on those days. But I remember one time, 20 years ago, I had to get something from the grocery store. And my memory is that it was shampoo. This is obviously a different time in my life. Uh, and I, I can't remember exactly why I needed a shampoo that particular day, why I couldn't wait till the next day. But I do know that it was like something, I, all right, I gotta go get shampoo. I'll just go run into the store. I'll just grab it, I'll leave, it'll be no big deal. That's all I wanted. And I remember getting to Econo Foods, it was downtown, and walking in, and as I walked in, I saw, I saw him as I walked in, 
He was standing outside. He didn't go to my church. He was an older man. I couldn't even tell you his name anymore. Uh, but he was, a, he was connected loosely to my church. His son was also not a member of the church, but went to like at one of our events. So I knew this older man's son. Anyway, as I was walking in, I saw him outside at Kano Foods. I was aware of his existence. And I immediately just kind of shut down and said, oh, whatever, I'm not, I won't pay attention. I won't look, I won't make eye contact. I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna go in and get my shampoo. And that's what I did, kept my head down, went straight to the right aisle, grabbed what I needed, left, paid for it as quickly as I could, tried not to make any kind of uh, comment or I just, just, just focused, focus on getting the shampoo, no interactions, no people, and get out to my car. That's all I wanted. And I remember walking out of Econo Foods into the parking lot, keeping my head down as best as I could, but then I lifted up my head and I made, I made eye contact with, with, that, with that gentleman. And uh, he looked at me and he smiled and uh, gestured. Um, and I don't even know if he recognized me or not. He was experiencing some cognitive decline at that time. Um, but, but I went over. Uh, and I even, as, as I walked over, I knew what was going to happen. And I just felt the sinking feeling of, oh, I don't want to do this. And I was resentful immediately. Immediately. I was angry about it. But I, I put on my best, fakest smile, and I asked him how he was doing, and you could kind of tell he was a little bit, a little bit confused, and he, he needed to get home. And he, he asked if I could give him a ride. And I put on my base, best, fakest smile, and I said, sure, I, 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 I can give you a ride. And I took him to the car, and I said, all right, where do you live? And I just remember... Uh, how far I had to drive because it wasn't like five blocks away from the grocery store. That's what I was hoping. It's just going to be a quick drive just down the street, drop them off and go home. No, it was, it was, we were driving out, out of town and we got to 19 and he turned out, take left to 19 and he was a little bit confused and we drove all the way around these county roads and he would kind of say, oh no, I think take left here. And probably like a solid half hour went by until finally we pulled into his driveway. And also he had some braces and, or some, uh, some things he needed help. So he needed to get out. He needed to help him out of the car. He needed to help him to his front door. All of this happened. And every single moment, I was at the worst possible attitude. I was, I was just ornery and mad that I had to do this. When I finally dropped him off, uh, he went inside. No thank you. Uh, no, uh, no, uh, any kind of uh, comment or gesture, appreciation. He just, he just left, and I got in my car and I, I drove home, and I just thought this is the worst, this is the worst thing they've ever had to do. Well, a few days later, uh, at that Bible study that that his son would sometimes come to, his son came in, and he came right to me, and I, I guess the guy must have recognized me enough to be able to say who it was. Uh, but the son thanked me so much. Uh, cause some, there was something that happened. I don't remember the details anymore. It doesn't matter all the details. The point is that that was a man in need, and I was able to help him at a time that was critical that he needed help. Now, the point of this story is not at all, oh, look at this thing that I did. No, the point of the story is it's not about me, thank God. Because if it was about me that day, if it was about what I wanted to do and what I was going to do, I would never, ever have taken him home, ever. I just want to be clear how small and petty and ornery and mean I was that day. I would have walked right on by. There was not a single part of my heart that day that wanted to do any kind of service to God or another person. I, I cannot emphasize enough how bad of an attitude I had as I drove that man home. And how just by chance, if I didn't look up and make eye contact and just feel bad about, you know, whatever polite social contract, the inertia that kind of forced me into this experience, that was it. There was no part of me, and I've probably made this clear enough at this point, but there was no part of me that wanted to be a part of what happened that day. And then yet God used me that morning to answer a prayer. To save this guy from whatever experience was happening on that morning. I was used by God well past my, any desire or ability that I had.
This brings us to the gospel. In the gospel for today, Jesus says the kingdom of God is like this tiny little mustard seed. The kingdom of God is like this yeast put into dough. This tiny little stuff. Things you can barely see, things you can barely recognize. It's so small and petty and tiny, pretty much invisible. That's the kingdom of God in the world. And this is good news because it means on some level that it's not about you. It's not about me. And that is good news. It's good news that the kingdom of God happens. Sometimes, maybe even often, outside of what we want or will in this world. So what that means is that God will use you even when your faith is small and even pathetic and tiny and barely there. God will still use you to bring about change in this world. That's what God does. Because the kingdom of God is about God's work, not your work. And so you can come to places like this, to where you are, where you are worshiping, wherever that is. Or you can come to the church building proper and you can worship. You can gather and do this work of the kingdom. Worship is part of the work of the kingdom. And you don't have to pretend like you're filled with this great amount of transformative faith. You don't have to act like you love Jesus all the way through from top to bottom, every single part of your spirit. You don't have to do that. That's what this means. That you can just be exactly who you are. And sometimes, yes, sometimes your faith might be so bright and big and beautiful. You might so filled with God's love. You're like a dog outside of the bath and you're just shaking it off. And so it touches everybody around you. That's sometimes the way that the, the love of God works in your heart. Absolutely. But those other times when your faith is so small... When you're not sure about this God stuff, when you're not sure about Jesus, when you're not sure if you believe any of it, or those times when your heart is so small, when you just feel so petty and ornery, that you don't have nothing, no desire at all to look or interact with the people around you. You don't have to come into places of faith You don't have to come into prayer. You don't have to come into worship. You don't have to come into into situations of service. You don't have to live your life pretending otherwise. You can be exactly who you are. You can feel how you feel. That's part of the promise of this. It's not about you. It's about what God is doing. And the other piece of good news about this gospel and about this promise is that it's all about you. God doesn't will God's will in this world through some magical faith lasers. You know, God doesn't snap God's fingers and then suddenly everything is right with the world. That's not how it works. God continues to use us, even in our pettiness, even in our brokenness, even in our smallness. God uses us to bring about God's kingdom in this world again and again and again and again and again. We are God's kingdom. We are the ones who bring about God's kingdom. God works through humans to bring upon God's kingdom on this earth. Today, tomorrow, and into into eternity. So dear friends in Christ, it isn't about you. And it's all about you. As God uses you to bring about God's kingdom. Amen.
Let us pray. Good and gracious God, help us to spread your kingdom. Help us to be contagious in the way that we speak about you and the way we live out the grace and forgiveness we have experienced firsthand, thanks to Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, O oh God, we pray for Habitat for Humanity. We give you thanks for the work they're doing in our community. We thank you for our partnership with them. We ask you, Lord, to continue to strengthen this partnership, continue to bless their work in this community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And oh, gracious God, we pray for all those in need this day. We pray especially for Jan Stromat, Sandy Cunningham, Nancy, Pat, Abby, Diane Lunder, Nancy Holty, Dorothy Jagish, and all those we name before you now silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us, as we forgive the ones who sinned against us. Forgive them. bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.